How's it going guys? Zippy here. So I am going to attempt to DIY my own pre-filter or sieve filter. <clears throat> so um, what I'm building it out of is uh, poly polypropylene plastic sheets and I'm going to use a, uh, a heat gun or a plastic welder to uh, weld them together. So here I go. This is my first time ever building one of these. Uh, so first step um, is I used a table saw and cut my sheets for the filter into the appropriate size. So right now I'm just making the, the box, the four walls and the base. So this is the base right here. So what I'm doing is I'm getting these uh, pieces prepped. The plastic weld together. So once you get your pieces all cut out, um, you can use a Stanley knife or a, uh, a sharp edge and you just kind of scrape off all the little plastic burrs um, from cutting it on the table saw, get them all cleaned up. And then you're going to want to use a, uh, a grinder to basically grind in a 45 degree angle on the plastic so that's when uh, the uh, the walls come down here you're gonna have a little groove to be able to plastic weld the plastic into so the walls are gonna sit straight on top of this and then you'll put the plastic weld into that little groove to help hold it together so that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just uh, grinding in all of the 45 grooves into all the joints. And uh, then I'll get the plastic weld gun out and start uh, welding these together. So let's do this. Zippy fast. All right, so that's all the grinding I should do. Um, those 45 degree angles are only needed at the uh, joints that you're gonna join the plastic at 90 degree angles. So that's why I did all four sides. So this side here I left flat because this is gonna come up here and it's going to go like that and then that little gap right there is where the plastic weld will go in and then i did the the uh angle on this side because the large side is going to come up on here and then that's going to join all together and make a box at least that's the theory <laughs> so that'll be next all right let's uh get to plastic welding my first time Zippy does it. All right, guys. So my next task is to uh, prepare the sides of my box. Um, I need to to drill the uh, the inlets for the the three inch inlet. Um, I'm using a uh, bulkhead slip connector, and then uh, I also for the outlet I'm doing a two inch. So for a three inch, you're going to need a four inch. Uh, drill saw and uh, mine is coming up the center of my hole is nine inches from the bottom and then I'm setting it off to one side I'm not going to center it it's just because the way I dug my just the way I position my uh, um, bottom drain and where the pipe works coming out so I need to set it off to one side so anyways I'm going to drill that hole and uh, I'll get the the holes drilled for the intake and the outtake. So here we go. All right, guys, now we're going to do some plastic welding 
And be in mind, I have never done this before. I've only seen Righty do it on YouTube. So here's my gun. Got the same gun as Righty, 1600 watts. Picked it up off of eBay for, I think it was 45 bucks, half price. And I also uh, used Righty's recommendation and I found the extra nozzles. So that's the tacking nozzle, different uh, welding nozzle. Got those. Uh, actually found a, a guy in the U.S. who sold them for not too much more than what the China price cost. So and then I uh, picked up a whole package of the polypropylene uh, welding sticks. So here we go. We're first going to tack that corner down and then we're going to we're going to plastic weld it. Let's do it. Zippy does it. All right, so we've gotten the base and two sides together. It's going pretty good, not too difficult. So we're gonna get the uh, other two sides on and then uh, we can start building the internal workings of this C filter. So let's keep on going, push on. All right guys, so I've gotten a few more parts put in on the C filter. So I got the box made, um, I got the holes cut out for the uh, uh, input output of the water. So then I've got the uh, first chamber made. So the water enters in through there <laughs> and it fills up this whole section and then it'll come and spill over here. So now I got to build this section. So this is where the the little sieve dam wall will be that rises up and down to control the flow. And then the external pump sits right there and exits that way off to the MK2 uh, filter. So anyways, that's where we're at. So I'm going to get get the next uh, next section done. Check See you back in a few. Zippy fast. All right, here we are. So I've uh, put in this section right here. So that's where the uh, the the dam wall will go into there and it'll slide up and down. So here is the wall. It goes in. And it'll slide up and down. So the next step is to make a float to attach to the bottom of that. So as you can see when it rises, the float will hit there and stop, which is pretty much flush at the top, which is above my water line. So it's not completely watertight, but it'll slow the water down enough if, if it ever needs to. So now I need to build the float to attach to the bottom and uh, I hope I hope the float is going to be buoyant enough to push this plastic door up and down because this door is kind of heavy. So I, I measured the float and the door, and it's it's 10 pounds worth of plastic. So I went on Google and looked up a buoyancy calculator, and I think I needed somewhere around three, almost 300 cubic cubic inches of vol of volume to make this plastic buoyant. So a 14 by six by three box should provide enough cubic inches 
to make this thing buoyant. But then I don't know how much friction the water is going to put on. So I don't know. It's going to be a test. But I'll get her done. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Alright, so next thing I'm going to do is... Uh, I think I'm going to get the, the seals on the bulkhead so I can put the uh, two and three inch pipe on it and then uh, that way I can plug them and do a uh, kind of a water test to make sure that this thing, this box holds water and doesn't leak. So next up I'll show you uh, doing the bulkheads. All right, see you on the next clip. All right, so... Here we are with my three inch bulkhead. I got my uh, four inch hole cut and uh, I'm going to use some uh, sandpaper here to smooth that out on the inside and then uh, press that bulkhead in. So let's get her done zippy fast. All right, so my next task is to get this three inch pipe into the bulkhead so I've cut this three inch pipe just with a little angle and uh, beveled out the edges and uh, now we're gonna put some like dish soap on it and uh, get it in the hole and hopefully with the bevel facing upwards because the water is gonna flow in and go up so that's my next task. Get her done. Zippy fast. All right. There we go. Pipe is in. Now we have an inlet into the seep filter. So there it is. Down there. With the beveled side facing up. It's kind of hard to see in the light. But that's our inlet. So, we'll see if that's watertight. I'll be able to plug that now. So now, time to get the two inch pipe in. And uh, we'll go from there. All right, I got the seven inch pipe in. Take a peek on the inside. There's the pipe. So now I'm going to hook up my pump just to make sure it uh, hooks up properly. Put that down in there and uh, see how that goes. All right, let's hook the pump up. All right, there we have it. Got the pump on. I hope I don't have to take that pump out too often. That was kind of a Kind of a challenge getting in that little space getting that uh rubber bendable 90 elbow onto that pipe but i did it zippy does it so all right well the seam filter is plumbed so now i just need to put in the damn wall but first i got to build the float for the damn wall and uh We'll give it a shot, see if it works. So there you have it. See you back after I make the damn wall. Alrighty, so now I'm going to uh, make the, uh, the float box for the uh, sieve dam wall. So I've uh, cut my bottoms, my tops, my sides, long sides, short sides, and then I've come in with a grinder and I grind it out a 45 degree angle around the whole perimeter of the top and bottom. So now I'm just going to take a scraper, clean this all up, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll end up uh, heat plastic welding it all together. And uh, the key to this is I'm making this a water watertight container, so I want to make sure I get a good weld all the way around it. So, all right, I'll show you back when I'm done welding the box. 
All right, guys. <clears throat> so I got my float built. So it's just a sealed box. And then I uh, put this on top of it to put the screws through there. So I, so the dam, the dam wall will connect to it. And uh, drill some holes through the dam wall. So that'll line up like so. And voila, go through there. Pull that out, and that'll cause it to push up and down. So now we're going to get it in. So here's the sieve. This thing's going to go in. Set down like that. And then the the dam wall will go through there, hook in, we should be good. Doing all this by one hand. One hand holding the camera. Alright, so there's the wall. Just going to push that all the way back. Lift this up. find the screw holes. Oh, it needs to go in a little bit. I need both hands. I'm going to pause it for a second. Let me get that in. Hold on. There we go. That's better. So now I'm just going to use a butterfly screw with a locking nut just like that and get those on there let me get those on one second zippy fast all right got those on so that's how it works so when the water level fills up this will float and it should push the wall up and as it comes to the top, it'll stop, it'll restrict the flow, and in theory, should control the flow of the water in and out of the sieve. So, that's the theory, that's what it's supposed to do. So now I gotta build the actual sieve that will sit, it'll sit here, and then it'll go diagonally and probably connect somewhere there, and it'll just lay in there. And that'll, that'll be the one that connects all the debris. And, uh, all right. So I think my next, next step is I'm going to, I think I'm going to give this a water test just to see if it leaks anywhere and uh, see if that damn wall actually floats and does what it's supposed to do. So I'll get back to you. Zippy fast. Alrighty. So now that we've got the sieve filter Pretty much built. I'm going to give it a uh, water tight test. So I've just uh, put on some uh, reverse flow check valves on the inlet and exit so that water doesn't come out. Um, but I might get a little water leaking out of there, but that's okay. Um, the main purpose is, uh, yeah, I want to make sure that water doesn't leak out of the case and that my float actually works the dam the dam wall so all right let's turn on the water and see what happens zippy does it all right here we are filling up and i already see we have a leak got a leak down there it's all right we'll fix that oh my valve isn't working. All right, well, let's figure this out. All right, well, once the water got high enough, the check valve stopped on its own. Still got water leaking down there. 
Um, getting a little bit of water through the sieve, but that's okay. Not a big deal. Approaching the top here. Almost to the top. Got a pretty good leak. <laughs> Coming from the side wall, but that's all right. That's going to be underwater, anyways. All right, here we are. We're going to flow over the dam. Here we go. Yeah, okay. I see what's happening now. Well, it looks like the wall is starting to work. But I think I need to be more, uh, I think I need to fix those leaks. Alright, well, looks like I need to make some modifications to get this fixed. How's it going, guys? Alright, so I am revamping my sieve filter. Uh, the first version didn't work with the, uh, the dam wall. The dam wall didn't work correctly. Um, so I'm uh, modifying it to incorporate a butterfly valve so this will go into here there will be a butterfly valve that goes into there that then connects to the float box and then I made these two little guide rails just uh, I'll put those in place that's just to create a guide for the float to move up and down so it doesn't float around and then this ridge right here I will weld that into place that will be the ridge that the uh, sieve actually sits on so right now I'm going to make the sieve so I ran out of polypropylene, so I'm just using scraps of what I have left over. Um, normally you would just kind of cut out a big hollow square, and then two of those, and then you can sandwich your sieve uh, mesh in between those. So uh, what I have is I've cut out strips. So these strips are... 18 inches long and I have between here and there is 16 inches but I want the sieve to be kind of curved so what I'm gonna do is I built this little jig here that mimics the box so I'm going to place these in And then I'm just going to use my uh, welding gun without a tip to heat these up. And in theory, they should heat up, they should take on that shape, and then when they cool down, they should, in theory, have this curve. So I'm going to do all four, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll just have to cut another piece that's the right distance to go from here to there. I'll solvent weld those together. So essentially I'll get my two squares. Um, and then this should just drop into place and set on that ridge. So that's my theory. Let's try it out. Let's give it a shot. 
All right, so the next step on my C filter is after I got my sides bent is uh, I cut the ribs, a three inch section, a one inch section, and then I just uh, uh, plastic welded them on. Um, I did cut some little squares here for the side. So basically now I'm gonna cut the stainless steel mesh together uh, to, or cut the mesh to the size and then I'm going to sandwich it in between, drill some holes, put some stainless steel screws, and uh, that'll be the sieve that catches all the dirt and poop. So there you have it. Zippy does it. So I'll get back to you to show you the finished product. All right, guys. <clears throat> there you have my sieve with the uh, 200 mesh uh, micron sieve installed so i made that little ridge down there for this to set in so let's see if i can do this one-handed all right so that's how that just sits down in there so now i just need to make the uh control valve and uh yeah, that will be the, uh, the sieve. So there will be a pipe here. The water will flow down onto it. And uh, that should catch all, all the junk. So there you have it. So now I'm just waiting for the uh, stainless steel rod to show up in the mail. So I can build that next. So I'll get back to you when I get that. All right. So now in this clip, um, what we're going to do is we're going to make the butterfly valve that goes inside your pipe, which will control the flow of the water. So the butterfly valve, uh, you want to be uh, kind of oval shaped. So what we're going to do is I've cut off a little sliver of pipe to use as a, a tracing. And then I'm basically going to draw a circle inside. I'm going to move it a half inch or a quarter inch over, draw a circle, move it a quarter inch over again, and then I'll end up kind of with an oval. And then I'll use my uh, um, jigsaw to cut that out, and then I'll use a grinding tool to uh, grind it out to make it make the shape better. And uh, so yeah, we'll show you that here in a second. All right, <clears throat> so we are going to make the control valve for the uh, butterfly uh, valve for the sieve filter. So I got a 10 inch stainless steel rod in the vise. And my goal is to heat that thing up and uh, try to bend it to a 90 degree angle. So here we go. That is pretty much a 90 degree angle, uh, pretty darn close. So I'm gonna go with that and then uh, I'm gonna put a 90 degree on the other bar I have and that'll be the piece that attaches to the float. So I'm gonna let that cool down and uh, heat up the other one and get a 90 degree in that one also. All right, so here we are on the control valve. Um, so this is my pipe I'm gonna install into. Probably actually get a little bit longer pipe. <clears throat> so I'm gonna take my hole saw. I'm gonna drill a hole through the center of this polypropylene. That's where this will go. And then this is my control bar that I heated up with the torch. Bent it 90 degrees, 
took a grinder ground out half of the rod and then I just need to drill some holes in it um, for screws and use a tap to make some screw holes and then I took the piece of polypropylene drew some circles and then I worked very slow and carefully and uh, basically just keep working around and around on that until that pretty much closes. I mean, it doesn't have to be a perfect um, fit. Um, the main purpose of that is just to slow the water flow down so it doesn't need to be watertight. Um, so that's that. And then this is the bar that's going to hook onto the float. And then those two will get screwed together. Um, so depending on, I probably should have got a longer piece of the stainless steel, but if I need to go longer, what I'll do is I'll just take a piece of polypropylene and then I'll attach it here to extend the bar out. So I'll make it work. Um, so yeah, so let me get this put together and uh, show you where I'm at after that. Alrighty, so here we are in another step of building my sieve filter. Um, so I got the control valve built. So now what I'm doing is I have the float in here and it's at the highest point. So because I didn't have a long enough rod, I'm going to have to extend that. So this will connect onto this. So I'll make some uh, little holders right there to mount this onto that. I'll attach that to the float. And then that'll move up and down. So when this drops down, it opens the, the valve. And then when it comes back up, it closes the valve so that should control the flow of the water hopefully that's the theory behind it and uh yeah so let me get the all, all attached together and uh we'll see how that works all right guys so i got the uh float installed with the uh check valve so hopefully it works so when the water rises at the bottom, it pushes this up and it stops at the maximum level, which now the check valve is closed. So that's how it works. I just put some, uh, put some little pieces there video's weird it's like flickering but anyways yep so i'm gonna test it out see if it works and then uh i'm gonna have to modify the actual sieve um because yeah it uh this bar now is in the way so i'll have to put it in make some adjustments but i'll get it working so there you have it there's my sieve Hey guys, how's it going? All right, finally got the sieve filter finished. So I'm gonna give it its initial uh, test run. So here is the filter. I got the pump in there, got the control valve, the float. I got the, uh, these are the rails to rest the sieve on. The sieve is right there. I had to shorten it just a little bit. I got a 90. I'm going to experiment with how the water comes out of here or if I need to put the 90 on it. So, first off, let's get the water turned on. All right, grab my trusty garden hose. All right, and we're going to simulate water coming in. All 
All right, so I see I have a leak down in the corner. It's not a big deal. So I'll probably add some silicone down into that corner if I can reach down there. So we're coming up. So far no major leaks. I see a little bit of water coming from some of the joints. And I'm not sure how this pipe will do. It's just kind of stuffed in there. Oh, it doesn't look like it's going to hold. May need something to set that on. Yep, nope, oh, that's not working. <laughs> All right, I got to fix that because that's not going to work. All right. Water is filling up. So far so good on this side. Just a little tiny leak at that bottom left corner. Got that fixed. That should stay for this test. Filling up to the next chamber. I do see some leaks. So I'll have to put some more silicone. And got the trash truck driving by. Alright, so yeah, I'll have to fix those leaks. Here we are, we're coming through the return pipe. Now we're filling up the bottom, and then the water should hit the float. Which I want to see if this float works. And I was thinking about turning the pump on, but I think the pressure of the pump will probably blast that pipe right off. All right, so the water is almost hitting the float. All right, so we're at the bottom of the float now. Hopefully that float has enough pressure to lift it. I see movement. All right, I see the float is rising. So the float, hmm. I'm going to have to work on that valve a little bit better. So that is quite a bit of water that's coming through. Steve.
So that's the seed. All right, well, the float's almost into water. I don't want it to take on water, so I'm gonna, we're gonna burst, burst the dam. Huh. <laughs> well, not as impressive as I thought. Well, that's just the water coming through the pump. All right, well, let's take the water out. All right, so here I have the seeds running with the pump. And it's running at about 50% speed, so 165 watts. So I can run it with the 90. Or without the 90. I think I'll probably run it with the 90. Well, I just hope it does its job. I hope that float doesn't fill up with water. <laughs> so there you have it. That is my first plastic weld home-built sieve filter. I really won't be able to tell how well it does until I hook it up and get it running. So... We'll see. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see this filter in action. So please make sure you uh, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, like my channel. Ring the bell for notifications. And uh, until next time, you guys have a good one. Take it easy. Zibby out.